and welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Danich Kimiak II, and I am the Theater Professor. And what you're probably noticing right now is I did not start with my usual opening of me standing in front of the camera and talking. And I know it's becoming a bit of a habit, but let me explain why. I open a show on February 12th, and this show, I'm doing some things that I've never done before. I'm working on projection mapping. Now, for those of you that are just here for the Autodesk sketchbook tutorial, you can ignore what I'm about to say, but for those of you that actually follow me on the website, let me give you just a quick rundown of what projection mapping is. I'm literally mapping projections onto scenery. Don't worry, you're going to be able to see some video, you're going to see some, uh, you're going to read some blog posts, you're going to listen to some podcasts. I'm going to be detailing a lot of what I'm doing, but to say that it's something that I've never done before and is difficult would be putting it mildly. For example, just the other day I sat in my office for five hours watching tutorials that other people are doing and and trying to learn as much as I can about projection mapping and and theatrical projection. So that's why you know I've been a, a little bit crazy here. But the good news is is I'm not you know I'm not skimping out on the content. I'm still doing my tutorials though a little less uh, less prolific as than what I've been doing. So why don't we just go ahead and jump then right into Autodesk Sketchbook this week. Now if you remember last week we talked all about the selection tool and this week we're going to look at the second set of tools here, which include the Crop Tool, the Quick Transform Tool, the Transform Tool, the Flood Fill, and Add Text Layer. Let's go ahead and start with the Crop crop Tool. Now, the Crop Tool is pretty easy, and what I'm going to do just very quickly is I'm going to, I'm going to, there we go. I've got a little, oops, I've got a little square there. I'm going to deselect, and if I grab my Crop Tool, and I crop around a section of it and then press enter that is my new image it's what what I like what, essentially what I crop out and you can do this with images so if you pull in an image so why don't we you know add in an image to this and we're gonna grab something something fun something like this one and we're going to zoom out a little bit we'll press enter so we have our new image here, and say all we really want are the tools here. This is my fireplace. So we grab our crop tool, and all we want is this section right here. Press enter, boom, there we go. We've cropped it down. This is destructive, meaning that it is gone. I can't, you know, it, I can't bring it back uh, unless I hit the undo button. So that's something to kind of be aware of is that it does indeed disappear. It's cropped, it's gone forever. A lot of times I'll use crops near the end of my drawing to just kind of do some finishing framing, but uh, but but not not I'm you know I'm not using it today. So that's the crop tool. It's simple. You can use the mouse to do it or you can actually put in your width and height real easy. Our next one is our quick transform tool. So if I click it you'll see we've got three. We've got a rectangle, a lasso, and the entire layer. So if we, we do the entire layer, and the transform tool allows you to move things around, it allows you to zoom it in and out, it allows you to rotate it. You can see there my degrees are on the bottom. I already did zoom in and out, and then it allows you to do stretching. And right now I'm stretching this way, but, oh, there we go. And then we can rotate it back. And I've done all sorts of things now to this image. I mean, it's, you can also stretch the other way, depending on where you start. So if I'm starting below it, I'm stretching this way. If I'm starting on the side, I'm stretching left and right, okay? The great thing about that, you can do all those transformations. And then if you hit escape, it just goes back to where it was before you did the transformations. So you can essentially essentially test it out. And the transformation I'm using there is the entire layer. But say you didn't want to transform the entire layer. Say you just wanted a section. We could grab the rectangle. We do our square like that. And now we're just transforming that part of the image. So why don't we stretch it a little bit? Come over here and stretch it a little more. 
Okay, so it's a, it's a great way to kind of do a collage. You can cut pieces out and start to build up this, this image that you want. Now, I'm not going to do that fully. And the last way is with the lasso tool. And we know where this is going, right? I mean, we can pull that out here, spin it, stretch it, and I'm going to escape out of that. There we go. So you can you can literally lasso around pieces if you wanted to. So if I zoomed in, I moved over, and all I wanted is this area right here. There we go. That's all I want right there. And I want to increase its size. Boom, there it is. There's my lasso tool. Or even better, delete out sections, rotate sections. That's what your lasso tool is. And again, this is all for the quick transform. The next one we have is the regular transform. And the regular transform grabs your layer and allows you to do, essentially gives you four points. If you're, right now I'm set in distort, and you can distort it. Or if you're in there, you can actually just use the scale, which is big and small. Now notice I can squeeze and smush. If you hold the shift down, it will scale it big and small without distorting it. Once you let go of shift, you've got kind of this bounciness going. Okay, and then of course you can then come back in here. Some fun things here, you know, play with perspective, etc. Go ahead and clear out of that. Our next one is a really fun tool, and for that I'm actually going to start a new layer and turn off my other layers. I'm actually going to use the selection tool, which again we used last week, and I'm going to create a square selection, and I'm also going to add to that a circle selection over here. And then what I'm going to do Let's add another circle. I'm just kind of having fun here. And that should be good enough for now. I think that'll work. All right, so what we're doing here is we are literally going to be filling up the space. So if we start with a solid fill, we can choose a color. Let's choose a nice reddish pink. And I click inside, boom, filled. Look how simple that was. Okay, and if you deselect, remember for those that are using shortcuts, it's Control D or Command D to deselect. You can see it makes a nice little fill, nice and clean. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to undo that. Our second fill, though, is where we start to have fun, and this is our linear fill. And you'll see I press at one point, I drag across, and now I have a gradient going across my selected image gets better you can change the colors so say you wanted a blue on this end and a lighter blue here and look at that we have a nice gradient from dark blue to light blue how am i doing that well these circles right here i'm double tapping with my stylus and then i can choose my color same with this one i double tap it there we go and then you can actually add so if you see I'm hovering over an area where there isn't a circle and you'll see a faint image of a circle if I click it double click it and I added in another color so you can play with these gradients and create all sorts of wonderful gradients and even while it's here you can start to adjust it and say you don't like this green we'll click the X above it and that gets rid of it you can also slide your gradient to get the best transition that you, that uh, the transition that you like the best, just be aware that once you ch hit click the check mark, you're done. Now you can reverse the gradient here. Let's reverse it back and then click done. There it is. My gradient is there. It's in. It's finished. I'm not going to be changing it. So just be aware that once you do it, it's done. And I said that, look, 
at that, my gradient came back. See, now I'm curious because when I was doing this earlier, if I were, oh, it looks like the gradient will indeed stay. But what if I deselect? Let's deselect. Ah, see, now I can't get my gradient. Unfortunately, it creates this new gradient within it. Okay, okay, so as long as we're still in the selection, it looks like that I can still adjust the gradient. Finally, we have our last gradient, which is our radial fill. So if I were to bring in here, you can see it's a radial fill. And again, you can change your colors. And there we go. And you can move it around if you wanted to, you know, say you wanted it a nice tight circle there with the red going fairly out. We could even add a second. And there we go. So that's the radial fill. So these are our three fills, solid fill, linear fill, and radial fill. Now you see here there's tolerance. Now I haven't played with tolerance yet because I don't have an image. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one off, unselect everything, and turn my image back on. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So let's say I wanted to fill something. And let me take my tolerance down to 1. And let's grab, OK, we've got a nice solid color. We're on the right layer. And I want to fill this black. There's no real change, is there? It's because my tolerance is so, oh, and I'm also on the wrong thing. There we go. You'll see here, see how very little of it is going the color, this, this pinkish color? And I'm going to bring it a little darker so we can see it better. It's because my tolerance is so low. So let's change my tolerance to, say, 20. Oh, suddenly we're starting to fill in here. Let's change my tolerance to 50. There we go. Okay, so you can see the way the tolerance works is it where you click, it checks that pixel. And then all the pixels around it, it checks to see if it's within 50. If it is, it fills those pixels in. Then all the pixels around that, it checks to see if it's within 50. If so, it fills all those pixels in. So that's what the tolerance does. Our next one is sample one, sample all layers. And that's to either adjust all layers or the single layer. I only have one layer now, so it doesn't really affect us. Currently, my, my tolerance is 189. Let's go back to 50. There we go. Mm, that's fine. And then we could even see that start to color my rocks with with our my linear fill here. Again, I'm on 50. I could even switch it around if I wanted to. So that is our fill tool. And it fills things in. It's great if you're doing comics or something like that. You've got line drawings and using your fill to initially just fill things very quickly. Next up, we have our text tool. And you can see it opens up a new editor here. You type in very specifically what you want. So let's type cowboy. I'm a cowboy. You can change its font. You can change the point size. Bold, italic. Let's make it a bold and italic. Underline, strike through, and then you can change the color. And then if you click OK, oops, you click OK, and there we go. We have my text. You can move your text around. You can make it bigger. You can rotate it. But see here, it is a text layer. It is not a regular layer. So there are things that you can't do, such as draw, that kind of thing. So if I were to grab my paintbrush, let me grab my paintbrush, there we go. And I'm on my text layer. Notice how that my, my pointer is a circle with a line in it. It's because I can't color on it. I can't do anything to it. Okay. 
Now I can rasterize the text layer, and if I do that, now I can paint on it. Okay, but as long as it's text, there's not much you're going to be able to do with it. You can edit the text layer, but can't paint, can't adjust. You can do a quick transform, but you can't fill. You definitely can crop if you wanted to. Okay, so those are the tools that we talked about this week. It is the second set of bars here. Just went through them very quickly. Again, it was the crop, the quick transform, the transform, the flood fill, and the add text layer. Next week, we're going to look at these next set of tools, which once you learn how to use them, you're going to be blown away. All right, my name is Terry Dana Jakimak II, and I am the theater professor.